Greetings and welcome to Growth Hacking Secrets. I am your host, Mohammed Sadiq from Atlanta, Georgia, and the co author of New Success Secrets available on Amazon. On this episode, we have a special guest, Mark Malkoff. Mark is a comedian and a host of Carson Podcast. And he is an amazing person. We just met in a few minutes. I get to know him very well. And he is not only, if you want to learn how to get noticed in a virtual world, you need to lean forward and listen in to our guests. I will be learning with you together. Please join me to give a warm welcome to our guest, Mark Malkoff. Mark, welcome. Oh, hi. It's so good to be here. Thanks for asking me uh, to yeah. do this. Yeah, Mark, we see you on commercials and everywhere in the big ones. I'm so honored to even have you on this oh, as good. a guest. No, sure. I was happy to get your email. And um, definitely, I know I can learn a lot from you as well. You've had so many amazing guests on. Yeah, we can learn from each other. That's the world we live in right now. So, Mark, let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who you were surrounded with? That inspired you to start a Carson podcast and become a comedian and how to get noticed in the virtual world. So tell me everything. All yeah. in one question. Okay. <laughs> everything in less than two minutes. Um, you know, when I was in high school, I, I, I was always very curious as a child, like how things worked and things. And then in high school, I was obsessed with comedy. So I started, I was like, how do you do comedy? So I, I, I got my own show at school. I just asked and I had my own comedy show and they said yes, which is a scary word sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that and taking trips to New York City to go to NBC to see like um, Camp Out for Saturday Night Live or David Letterman. So as a teenager, I was so influenced by New York City. Um, I moved here when I was 18 to go to college um, at, at NYU. And New York is such an amazing place for curiosity. So I started making these videos. For example, there's Starbucks every street corner. And I wanted to see if I could go to every single Starbucks, all 171, in less than 24 hours, make a purchase and consume something. It took me a month of training and I, and I did it. And people couldn't believe. People told me it was possible. So I take the curiosity and I go further than people think is possible. And I show them that that it almost everything that I do that I've done is is possible, and that uh, people are very surprised and sometimes inspired. I get emails. Oh, you inspired very very good. How you come up with those new ideas like uh, in twenty four hours and go and taste everything? Oh my God, that's like. <laughs> well, it's 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 something like I was really upset with people saying that New York people that had never been to New York City saying they, they heard New Yorkers were not nice, people from New York. And I wanted to prove to the world that New Yorkers are in fact nice. And I, I just, I was walking around New York one day and I was like, how can I do this? And then it just occurred to me that I bet you New Yorkers, I wasn't sure for sure, but would actually physically carry me and that would prove to the world. And it was the coldest day of the year. It was 11 degrees and I was carried 9.4 miles by like 155 people. And it was amazing. The power of asking, like, that's one of my biggest things. Ask, 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 big asks. And um, yeah, that's basically how I've been able to make a, a career is, is stuff like that. And just seeing Starbucks all over the place. It's like the natural curiosity. Um, how many are there? Could you go to everyone? So um, in the Apple store with the goat, I brought a goat into the Apple store. That was because I had heard people had done strange things in Apple stores. And I wanted to see if it was true. So I documented it. And I, I did all these bizarre things in, in the Apple store. And they were OK with it, including bringing in a goat. Bringing in a goat into Apple store? I did. It was, yeah, it, was, it got like, I think it got over a million views. And a lot of people um, around the world loved it. Um, yeah, I did a bunch of strange things at the Apple store. I had a date in the middle of the store with my wife, Christine. And we had a we had a trumpet player. We had. Um, Somebody serving us food. And it was one of those things I had heard that from people, somebody that worked at Apple, that they would watch my Apple video and they would show it to new trainees just to show them what could happen in an Apple store. And that, that the Apple people really, really liked it. Because my whole thing is trying to make people look good. I don't want negativity. I don't want to make anybody look bad. And um, yeah, thankfully, they were they were they were happy with it. So when you're coming with the crazy idea, something out of box, which normal people are not thinking, what yeah. are the top three missteps to avoid to make it successful? Because there's a certain thing should not go wrong. So what are the top three things to avoid? Uh, try, I think the first thing is trying to do everything 
yourself. Like, I mean, when I first started, I was just consumed with, I have to do this, I have to do this. And it's just like, I, I've made asking an art form. Um, I didn't even know how a camera worked. Um, and I would just get a f like friends of mine that didn't even really know how to film to point a camera at me. And it worked. I mean, it was just one of those things where I was, it, it just was too much. So definitely that considering partnerships, um, I think is a really good thing that I didn't really occur to me. You can get double the work done if it's the right person. Um, I was obsessed with my work. Like all I thought about was my work and I was really, I was not relaxed and I was yeah overly obsessive with, with my work and that was not healthy. That was actually quite terrible. And thankfully I do meditation now and uh, prayer and I'm like, I'm married. So it's definitely gotten a lot easier, but sometimes it's still, I just get too obsessed and I don't think that that is healthy just to everything like work, work, work. So that, that was a misstep. Um, and then lack of confidence in myself. For some reason, um, even though I've pulled off all these things that pe people said were near impossible, I just, the, the voice in my head sometimes psychs me out. It's like, Mark, can you, you can't do this. And I, I definitely still have that sometimes. And I have to really, really talk to myself and remind myself everything that I've been able to accomplish um, and and just go for it. Like a charity wanted me to stay up 24 hours to promote their charity. I've only stayed up 27 hours. I, I've never stayed up more than that. And I ended up staying up 52 straight hours with my wife, Christine. And there's no way I thought I could do it. Like zero way until one of my friends was like, you're not going to be able to do that. And then I was like, light bulb, I'm going to do it. And <laughs> It was very, very hard, but I definitely think like hearing other people tell me things are impossible um, is good, but definitely um, the lack of confidence early on, because you have to believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a big thing. They have to believe in self. When you say impossible, you know, I am possible. That's what that really you're making it happen. Everything. I am possible, you know? Oh, yeah. That's I mean, that's my thing. Like, I always admire people that you know, that can pull things off. And I, I, you know, I don't hit every single time, but like my, my, my average is quite good for doing those things. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mark, you said you don't hit everything. So I want you to share a one failure with us, any single most professional failure and what did you learn from it and how do you recover from it? Well, it's strange. Cause like I did this whole video web series. I, I get paid to do these. So I was doing a thing where I was trying to get the famous actor Bill Murray to come yeah. to my apartment in Queens to have okay. dinner because he's known for doing these really odd, quirky things. Yeah. Um, and I would call his phone number, his 800 number and leave messages. And I would never hear back. And then I realized um, and it failed. I didn't get him here. And I realized that Bill Murray will do crazy things, but it has to be in the moment. It has to like happen organically. And um, it was a huge failure, but a guy did a, a documentary that got on Netflix and they interviewed me. So like, I got so much publicity out of failing, yeah. um, being on this documentary on Netflix. I heard from so many people that couldn't believe, believe it was on watching the documentary on airplane. So it is one of those things where it definitely was a failure, but, but sometimes those failures will open up doors you, people have never imagined. Mm, that's a lot to learn from this one this one story so never give up you know <clears throat> i think so and it's one of those things where i still believe bill murray is going to come have lunch with me at some point <laughs> i don't know what it's going to be but we're we're going to have lunch like that's that's my mindset always it's just i'm a patient person like my my podcast sometimes i've had 315 plus guests on my podcast and some of them took literally 5 years one took 6 years to book like politely persistent, just checking in every so often until finally, thankfully, they said yes. But definitely thinking long term, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. Mark, maybe I need to ask you what is the script you use to follow up somebody for six years so I can follow that one. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's one of those things where I just try to show them that because um, being on my, my podcast, a lot of people are, are very shy. And I just try to explain that. Um, you know, it's audio only. Here are some samples. You can tell that I, I want to make my, my everybody look good. Um, when I email somebody, especially, like, I'll know so much about them. I'll put, like, a, a few specific things. So it's not like I'm just emailing, will you be on my podcast? I, I always say, I want to ask you about this, this, 
and this, which are like very specific that not a lot of people would know unless you did research on them. So I think that that helps as well. And it, like if they have books coming out normally, um, sometimes they'll change their minds. It really, really depends. But um, I just try to send them a list of guests that I've had on. Like that really helps. I think sometimes to be like, um, here are like the three biggest guests that I've had on. And I think sometimes that will change their mind as well. But, you know, just being polite, persistent, not being uh, a pest, not being annoying, but just checking in every so often. And you you never know. You just never know. Yeah, yeah. I have tried someone for almost a year. So mine is not five, six years, by the way. So I was, you know, keep... I couldn't say no. They say, oh, my God, no one follow me that much. And even in my family, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I still keep doing it like. One of the biggest mistakes pe people do is not following up with, with emails. Like, like uh, somebody recently, I, I, I just an email. I've been so busy. I they asked me to to be a guest on something and I missed it. And thankfully, they asked me to follow up. Like, I'm a big follow up. Like after five days or a week, just gently checking in. And I can't tell you how many people have thanked me and how many wins I've gotten just with that. Because like a lot of people, a lot of younger people sometimes that come to me for advice think. If you don't hear back from your first initial email, it's over. And it's simply not true. Like there is so many more things that, that people can do in getting creative. Um, but the following up thing is essential. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That leads to our question. What are your top three success secrets uh, in this whole thing? One is a follow up. I know that already, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know I say about ask, asking, but like I asked Ikea if I could live in their store and they said yes. I mean, it was global. They told me it was the most publicity they ever got in the United States. And that was just me asking for something ridiculous, asking people to carry me. Um, when I, sometimes when I'm doing my video projects, I just need help from some things I don't, I just can't do. There's no way I could do them. And just asking people, and sometimes you get no's, but a lot of times people just want to do something cool. And a lot of times people think like, I, no one's going to want to work on this with me or help me. Or, or, or do this, but there are always people that are around. So, and I think that that definitely asking, like, like for your show, for example, asking people to be on that you think might not be on, like really like big stretches, big reaches, because sometimes very, very surprised who says yes. I can't believe some of the people that have been on my podcast and I just um, get kept reaching out and stuff. Um, I definitely think like thinking long-term, like I mentioned, like, a lot of people just like they want it right away and they're not patient with themselves to get better and, and better at, at something. And I, I've always, for the, even though I want it right away, keeping that mind step, it's like these small, small steps. And once, once you, you get better and better and better, it's just like it just gets easier and easier. So definitely thinking long term, not getting frustrated in the beginning. Um, even though, you know, there's going to be hurdles, knowing there's going to be roadblocks, always knowing that there's going to be roadblocks to go through. And then I think the third thing, and we talked about it a little bit, is is really thinking big and over the top, like believing I can pull off the near possible. Too many people think small. They think very, very small. And I think that that for a lot of people is, is a mistake. I, I really, really do. I think um, I, I had a podcast called Persistence. 360. And I talked to like some of the most successful people that that did things as well as me that the people said there's no way you can do this, but they asked they asked for big things and they got them. I think people can do that in their their, their personal life. I think people can do that business wise, but just like even like picking up the phone or writing a letter sometimes. I'm shocked who gets back to me sometimes. Doing things a little different, like instead of emailing, sometimes write a letter. Um, if they're in the phone book, sometimes just call in cold. And um, it's really worked out for the most part. I mean, I, I can't, I can't um, emphasize doing things different than everyone else is doing, I think is, is a huge uh, thing too. Wonderful, wonderful. Mark, how are the Growth Hacking Secrets community people are watching this now, how can support you? Oh my goodness. Um, definitely, I think my social media handles, um, my website's markmalkoff.com, which has all my handles. And I'm on Twitter at mmalkoff, Instagram at markmalkoff. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I pray with my wife. Like I'm definitely, a, we teach Sunday school and I believe in God. So I will take prayers 
uh, for my career. I'm trying to do things that make people happy and spread joy. I'm working on something now, but I will take, I'll take prayers. Even like, I know that so many things are wrong in the world and they, those take priority over me, but like, I will take, I'll take prayers. Mm, wonderful. This is good. So check Mark, malkoff.com, M-A-R-K-M-A-L-K-O-F-F.com. Thank you so much. As we are about to wrap up, I like to ask this question to every guest almost. Uh, what would you say as a kind of testimonial for the show? What would you say to your best friend about growth? You I would, right I now? Say, first of all, your podcast, people learn so many things. And um, I think one of the best things is you. I mean, you're like, definitely people will learn a lot and be better at what they do, but you're so pleasant and so charming as an interviewer. You're almost like a friend to, uh, to uh, the people that, that watch. So I definitely, uh, definitely recommend um, that people listen and tell their friends. Mm, thank you so much for your kind words. Really appreciate it. What would you say as a final word, Mark? I would just say um, definitely like once a week to start out trying to, um, trying to do something that's out of your comfort zone, like in terms of either asking or trying to, trying to achieve something that it, you think is like, out of your reach and just keep whittling away until you get a success. Because once you get the one success, it will motivate you um, to do more. And your 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 mind will like will totally open up more at what is possible. But um, falling, getting no's is actually it can be a good thing because um, to get yeses, you have to get no's. I mean, the no's are there, but definitely all you need is one sometimes one person to say yes, just one yes. And that can change somebody's life. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. That's a great uh, wisdom. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your wisdom with us today. On the behalf of Growth Hacking Secrets uh, community and our entire team, we really appreciate you. This Thank is Mark Siddiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia. Until the next episode, all good wishes.